Hello everyone and welcome. The Dodge Demon 170 has numbers that are simply mind-blowing. Over a thousand horsepower, accelerates at over two G's, never done before in a production car. It generates cylinder pressures equal to the weight of about seven and a half Dodge Demons pressing down on a single piston. The fuel injectors are capable of providing 164 gallons of fuel per hour. For context, that's more than four times the maximum fuel flow of a modern F1 engine, which makes similar power. So yeah, okay, surprise, maybe the Demon isn't fuel efficient. But it throws down a 0 to 60 of 1.66 seconds, a production car record, and that's a number we can certainly trust, right? No, of course not, because as is increasingly common, incredibly cool engineering must be viewed through the distorted lens of misleading marketing. The 0 to 60 is with rollout, and if you've watched this channel, you know how dumb I think rollout is. The industry practice of deleting the first foot of acceleration. Essentially, it's starting the 0 to 60 clock after the car has reached about 6 miles per hour. You would probably call that a 6 to 60, rightly so, but within the industry, we'd call that a 0 to 60 with rollout. And honestly, most of the time we forget to say that last bit. Now, I'm just some idiot on the internet, right? Why should you listen to my opinion? And truthfully, you shouldn't. My opinion doesn't matter. Don't listen to it, but do listen to the opinion of the current seconds. CEO of Dodge and what he said about rollout back in 2017 as it related to the previous Dodge Demon. Quote, rollouts aren't a fair way to do 0 to 60, honestly. A real 0 to 60 is from a dead stop. Wait, what? So in 2017, Dodge cared about portraying their numbers in a fair way. So when they gave the 0 to 60 of the 2018 Demon at 2.3 seconds, it was truly from zero. No rollout nonsense. But six years later, you cannot even find the word rollout mentioned once on the public Demon page or on the media page. They admit it only when you ask, and they won't provide the number without rollout. The current CEO of Dodge has been quoted saying rollout isn't fair, and yet they won't even tell us what the number is. Incredible! Okay, but this is still a really cool achievement, so let's break down the numerous disclaimers that go along with this 0 to 60 and talk about what the real 0 to 60 might be. Okay, so here we have what is the equivalent of Top Gear's cool wall, except now we're looking at disclaimers for this car 0 to 60. Some of those disclaimers are not cool, some of them are very cool. So we'll get into them. Uh, and starting off with not cool, there's really two big ones rollout and a prepped surface. Now, I know some people are going to push back and say, this is a drag car on a drag strip. Surely, you know, that's where rollout originates. It makes sense to use rollout in this case. Now let's take a moment. 0 to 60s are not measured on drag strips. They do not measure your 0 to 60. They measure your 60 foot, but that is something different. 0 to 60 is measured using a GPS. And then what they do is they delete the first foot digitally. They say, here's what the actual 0 to 60 is. Then they delete that first foot and say, here you go public, you can believe this number that has, you know, six miles per hour deleted from it. Uh, it's crazy. It makes no sense. So that's disclaimer number one that isn't cool. The second being a surface. This is using glue. It's on a drag strip. You know, it is a drag car, so I kind of get it, but when a car magazine, when you open a car magazine and it says this car 0 to 60 is this, it's on a road. It's on a road surface, right? It's not using glue. All the car magazines use rollout, and they don't believe you should be using glue for your numbers. The only other car that's done it basically in recent history is Tesla with the Plaid. Uh, it wasn't cool, so Motor Trend did it their own test and got the real numbers on a road without using glue. So both of these, not cool that they did it, or at least didn't provide the real numbers. So regarding real numbers, let's look at how powerful rollout really is, looking at some actual examples. So these are some numbers from Motor Trend. The Tesla P100D was able to accelerate to 5.9 miles per hour in that one foot of rollout, uh, and it took 0.26 seconds. LaFerrari rear wheel drive, so kind of similar to the case here, uh, which is interesting to see, also 5.9 miles per hour, and it did it in just 0.19 seconds. Um, so, you know, 
it's real zero to 60 time, you would add on 0.19 seconds to get that with the number that includes rollout. Okay, so Tesla Plaid, 5.9 miles per hour. Again, so it's kind of cool to see that there's this speed that basically with one foot of acceleration on a tire, uh, you reach this maximum speed of about 5.9 miles per hour. Uh, and the Tesla Plaid did that in 0.15 seconds. So that was the rollout time that was deleted from its zero to 60. So if we were to look at the Tesla Plaid, this is accelerating on average at about 1.8 Gs. The Demon 170 is supposedly capable of two Gs. So if you were to plug in accelerating from zero to 5.9 miles per hour at two Gs, that would give you just 0.13 seconds. Now, my own time in the previous Dodge Demon, which was not good, it wasn't that quick of a zero to 60, uh, but I accelerated in that first foot to 5.1 miles per hour in point five seconds. So my rollout was 0.25 seconds when I tested this car uh, several years ago. So the actual zero to 60 for the Dodge Demon on a prepped surface is gonna lie somewhere between these two numbers being added. So a 1.79 to a 1.91 second, below two seconds, which I mean, this is you know extraordinary. And I'm betting that it's closer to this number than it is to this number because this was in the old Demon and it wasn't that great of a launch. So it's gonna be a really good zero to 60 on a prep surface and definitely below two seconds, which is awesome. Awesome to see. So what else is cool about the Demon? Well, this is a genuine production car. I think that's awesome. There's gonna be up to 3,300 of these built. So good numbers of them built. And this is a car that costs $100,000. Now, yeah, as the name implies, there's probably gonna be a $170,000 markup, but it's a $100,000 vehicle, right? This isn't just some extraordinary thing like, you know, the Rimac Nevera or the Pininfarina Batista where it's multiple millions of dollars and then they say, oh, production car record. It's like, yeah, kind of, I guess, but it's much cooler when it's something that's you know more within grasp of the public uh, that isn't some insane number like you know two million three million dollars and that you know they're actually making it in decent production numbers also is this the first car to break the two second barrier zero to sixty it just may be now yes this was on a prep surface so that's the disclaimer that goes along with it but it did actually start at zero unlike a lot of those out there saying hey we have this zero to sixty under two seconds and then they're not telling you that that doesn't include uh, the rollout time. So the reality is this is a car that has done it, zero to 60 in under two seconds. Also what's crazy about this is that the vehicle is rear wheel drive. This makes a launch so difficult to hit a really good zero to 60. We'll get into that later. The fact that this is a thousand horsepower with a warranty, that's incredibly cool. It has cool features like the trans brake and power chiller, which I have videos on if you're curious about how those work. Okay, now two more really cool disclaimers that go along with this zero to 60 of the Dodge Demon. First of all, it's on drag radials. And you might immediately be like, what, that's cheating. But it's not, they're street legal. They took drag radials, they put some grooves in them so that they could make them street legal. They did the work, they're bespoke to this vehicle. Uh, and, and of course they are critical for that zero to 60 and that's how you're gonna get that extra grip for the incredible launch. Uh, but they did it. They put street legal drag radials on a production car. Uh, uh, are they gonna be great in the rain? Probably not. Are they gonna wear really fast? Probably. Do you have to sign a waiver to use them? Apparently so. Dodge tells me there's an agreement covering things like tires that buyers must sign. Uh, so regardless, like yeah, it's, it's an asterisk that goes along with this zero to 60, but they're street legal. So in my opinion, it works. Now, does this mean everyone from now on is gonna be offering an option for their cars to come with you know, drag radials in order to hit that zero to 60? I don't know, maybe. But regardless, Dodge did it, I think it's cool. Also, to run at maximum power, the engine needs to have E85, so ethanol uh, for the fuel in order to reach that 1,025 horsepower. It's less if you do not run on ethanol. What's cool about this is that the system automatically detects what your fuel is, the composition, how much ethanol is within that, and as long as the fuel is 65% or greater ethanol, it will unlock full power and you can achieve uh, these numbers you know, with the given disclaimers and conditions provided here. So it's a street legal fuel. Uh, you know, it's not as available as pump gas, but I think regardless, it's, you, know, you can run it on the street, They've got everything integrated so that you can run it without having to think twice about it. I think both of these are very cool that they did it for this product.
Okay, something that's almost equally as important as tires in order for a rear wheel drive vehicle to get a good launch is where its center of gravity is. It is critically important. So I'm going to explain why. So if you're to look at a Dodge Demon, and I'm taking these specs from the previous Dodge Demon, which had a weight distribution of 58% on front, 42% of the weight on the rear. And you look at what is the maximum force that this rear tire can accelerate uh, this vehicle with. Well, that force is equal to the frictional coefficient of your tires multiplied by how much weight is on that tire. Okay, so if if you have a tire that's capable of accelerating at 1 G, well it has a frictional coefficient of 1. If you have a tire that has a frictional coefficient of 2, it's able to accelerate at 2 Gs. So in this case, we know we're able to accelerate at 2 Gs, so we have our frictional coefficient of 2. Now, 42% of the weight of the vehicle is on that rear tire, so the maximum acceleration we can have is 0.84 Gs based on the weight distribution of this vehicle. Now we know it can do better than 0.84 Gs, right? That's not all that impressive. So how do we improve that? Well, the way you improve it is as you start accelerating, you have load transfer to that rear wheel. So as you start accelerating, the center of gravity, you can pretend that you basically have a force that's saying, okay, now we're resisting this motion and we're transferring load from the front end to the rear end. And where you position that center of gravity is critical if you want to achieve the maximum acceleration. So, in the world of engineering, uh, there's this principle where if you sum the moments about a point, it should equal zero on a free body diagram. So if we're looking at all the forces on our car, basically we have uh, the weight of the car resting on the two tires, and we want all of that weight to be on the back tire, so we're going to eliminate this front, and then we also have the force that the tire is trying to accelerate our vehicle with, right? It's trying to push the car that way. So you have this force, uh, which the tires are providing, that frictional coefficient times the normal force, in other words, two times n, so two n multiplied by this distance y, and we have the force of the weight of the vehicle on that rear tire, so we've got the road pushing up with the normal force, one normal force, multiplied by this distance x to sum our moments about the center of gravity. We'll get to the point of all this uh, if this seems confusing, but if you write this out, what you can basically find is you have normal force times x equals two normal force times y. In other words, x equals two y. So this distance here has to be twice this distance here to locate your center of gravity. So your center of gravity must be located on this dotted line I've drawn right here in order to achieve maximum acceleration. What if your center of gravity was up here? Well, what that means is, as you start accelerating, the car would simply just flip backwards, right? It would reach, it wouldn't be able to reach two Gs before it just starts to flip back. What if your center of gravity was down here in this region? Well, then you would never be able to reach that two Gs. Your, your tires would start spinning before that happened because you don't have enough load transfer going back to that rear tire. So it's critical that the center of gravity falls on this dotted line. So when Dodge is designing it, they have to make sure that it happens like that. Now, you can have a little bit of a benefit from the springs, right? So as the front end lifts up, that means your center of gravity also lifts up, which gives you a bit of a benefit and helps you achieve this, even if your center of gravity were, say, just a little bit lower than this dotted line. But the critical point is, if you don't have your center of gravity high enough, well then you just do, you know, you spin the tires before you can reach two Gs. If you go above that, if your CG is way too high, the car just flips backwards. That's not good, right? So it's, it's really a delicate balance, and it's a very cool thing to see that they're able to achieve this two Gs and have that, you know, just have the tires lift up and then go on down uh, the drag strip. Okay, so for a rear wheel drive vehicle that has plenty of power, there are two factors that are limiting your acceleration. One is your tires, and the other is the location of your center of gravity. So this equation right here takes those two variables and allows you to calculate your maximum possible acceleration based on your tires and based on where your center of gravity is. So if you plug in all the numbers for the Dodge Demon, uh, you get a maximum possible acceleration of two Gs if you have a center of gravity height at about 855.5 millimeters. Now that's pretty high. For example, a Toyota Supra has a center of gravity height at about 500 millimeters. Um, but you know, part of this could be that, that front 
front end is going to raise up a bit before uh, you know you get full load transfer to the rear and part of that is helped actually by the front damper so the front dampers have a setting when you're in drag mode they have soft rebound meaning allowing the vehicle to lift up to pull away from those dampers very easily so it's a quick transition and then everything else is stiff the rear is stiff uh, and compression is stiff but it allows the, the front of the car to lift up very easily which can help with raising that CG which can help with load transfer uh, so the cool thing about this equation is you can use it to calculate in the real world what's the maximum acceleration that this thing can actually achieve Okay, so here's the really cool part where we use math to predict real world numbers. And this is going to illustrate why rear wheel drive is so challenging. So on a prep surface, knowing that we have a maximum frictional coefficient of two, the average acceleration of the Demon down that zero to 60 was 1.5 Gs, absolutely bonkers, which gives it a zero to 60 of 1.8 seconds on a prep surface, which we had calculated earlier. Compare that to the Tesla Model S Plaid, uh, which is at 2.13 seconds on a prepared surface. So significantly quicker than the Plaid, which is absolutely nuts. However, if we go to a road, a public road, uh, you know, a normal road, a drag strip that hasn't been prepped, uh, and let's give this uh, demon the benefit of the doubt and say this is the highest frictional coefficient of any tire uh, out there that you can put on a production car at 1.5. The, the real limit, uh, I believe today, is somewhere around 1.4 uh, but they have surpassed that with these drag radials so let's say it's 1.5 well that will give them because of the location of the center of gravity using this equation uh, it will give them a maximum acceleration of about 1.1 g's meaning the real world using really nice tires but on you know non-prepared surface they're going to have a 0 to 60 of about 2.5 seconds versus Tesla Plaid which we know has already done it in 2.3 seconds. So the second you go out into the real world, uh, this is no longer the world's quickest production car. It's only on that prepared surface with a certain set of circumstances which it can achieve that number. Now just for fun, let's look at some other circumstances. And no, you shouldn't be driving your Dodge Demon in the rain or the snow, right? Like it's designed for the drag strip. But theoretically, if you were to, you know, what are some of the numbers that you can expect? So if you're driving in the rain and you have a frictional coefficient of 0.8, the maximum acceleration that the Dodge Demon is going to be able to achieve is 0.44 Gs, giving it a 0 to 60 of 6.2 seconds. Compare that to the Tesla Model S Plaid. If you've got that frictional coefficient of 0.8, it's going to be able to achieve a 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds because it's all-wheel drive. In the snow, things get even worse. So our maximum acceleration, given a frictional coefficient of 0.3, is now just going to be 0.14. 4 G's and our 0 to 60 is 19.5 seconds versus the Tesla at 9.1 seconds. So less than half. So real world in basically every condition, an all wheel drive vehicle that has plenty of power is going to be quicker. All right, so quick summary on a prepared surface, the zero to 60 is somewhere around 1.8 seconds, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, in the real world, I doubt we're gonna see a zero to 60 better than 2.5 seconds. Uh, and then the other thing is, you know, once again, this car is incredibly cool. You don't have to be misleading about it to explain how cool it is. So my advice to Dodge is simply let out the real numbers, release the real numbers, let a third party test this thing. It'd be awesome if you did. Thank you. Thank you all so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below.